Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a pleasure to have you join in our online worship service from around the world. The elders of BICF warmly welcome each one of you. May the presence of the Lord be with us as we praise and worship Him today. Today's sermon is over our future. The text is taken from Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34. And our speaker is Elder Sirman Purba. Before we go on, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather before your presence today, we come with hearts full of joy and gratitude. We thank you for your goodness and faithfulness to us. Lord, as we enter this time of worship, we open our hearts to your wisdom and grace. May your spirit guide us and speak to our minds as we seek deeper understanding of your word. In this worship service, may we find strength, encouragement, and unity. Lord, we bring before you our joys and burden, knowing that you are the source of our strength. Bless our time together, that it may be a time of renewal, inspiration, and transformation. In Jesus' name, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Now, let's sing a praise song titled, Bless Assurance, led by Janice, and continue with the sermon. This is my story. This is. 
let us pray. Almighty God, we are very thankful that we can come to worship you today through BICF online Sunday service. We want to listen to your sermon on the mountain from Matthew 6, 25 to 34. May your Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts and minds so that we can understand what you want to convey to us. Your word will transform us from a life full of worry to a life of firm belief that God provides all our needs. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, our sermon today is taken from Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Brothers and sisters, our three points for this sermon. The first one, the, moon, the fundamental of worry. The second, Jesus' command to overcome worry. And the third, repent and bring it to the cross. As a background, the word therefore in the beginning of the sermon refers to Matthew 6, 19-24. Matthew 6, 19-24 actually part of Jesus' sermon on the mount about various aspects of living a righteous and faithful life. Jesus teaches the dangers of storing up treasure on earth and the need to prioritize heavenly treasure. Jesus warns against serving both God and wealth or mammon, emphasizing that where one's treasure is, there their heart will be also. Jesus reminds us the importance of having right focus in life, directing our devotion toward God rather than material possession. Now, brothers and sisters, we come to part one of the sermon. I titled 
the fundamental of worry, the first fundamental we found in verse 25. Rhetorical question by Jesus. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? I will explain this. In this verse, Jesus reminds us about the value of life beyond material needs. We set ourselves in a constant worry when we prioritize material possessions over the value of life itself. Jesus encourages a shift in perspective, commanding us to consider the value of life beyond material possession, which is spiritual connection with God and our relationship with others. Jesus remind us to focus our spiritual growth, love, and service rather than becoming consumed by worries about material things. That is fundamental number one. Fundamental number two, we found in verse 26. Your heavenly fathers feeds them. Jesus reminds us that God is the ultimate provider for all creature. When we lack trust in God's care and provision, we are prone to constant worry. Also, we are prone to constant worry as we strive to meet our needs through our own efforts and lacking a sense of spiritual connection with God. If we doubt God's care and provision, we become preoccupied with concern about our material needs. That was the second fundamental of worry. Now we come to the third fundamental of worry. We found in verse 26, rhetorical question by Jesus. Are you not of more value than they? In this verse, Jesus reminds us about our inherent worth and value created in the image of God. If we do not truly value our lives as Jesus suggests, it can lead to a state of constant worry. A low understanding of our own value will lead us to first, lack of self-worth, and second, fear of rejection or failure, and third, sense of meaningless relationship. Brothers and sisters, that was the, the third fundamental of worry. Now we come to the fourth, we find in verse 27, also rhetorical question by Jesus. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? In this verse, Jesus reminds us the futility of worry. He is asking us to reflect on the pointlessness of being worried, as it doesn't bring any benefit. Worry accomplishes nothing. We can add nothing to our lives by worrying. We can actually harm ourselves through worry, as stress is one of the great contributors to disease and poor health. Now we come to the fifth fundamental of worry. Verse 28 to 30, O oh, you little faith. Little faith can lead to constant worry 
explains as follow. First, limited trust in God's provisions. As a result, we are more prone to worry about various aspects of life. The second little faith means dependency on self. People with little faith may rely heavily on their own efforts and resources. Instead of seeking guidance and strength from God, they attempt to control situations through their own power. However, when faced with circumstances beyond their control, they become overwhelmed by worry. As they realize their limitations and inability to manage everything on their own. Brothers and sisters, now we come to point two of the sermon. The title is for point two, Jesus' command to overcome worry. The first command. Look at the verse. We see this in verse 26. This verse emphasizes God's care and provisions for even the smallest creature of his creation. It is also a reminder for us to rely on God's faithfulness and provision rather than succumbing to worry about material need. One notable characteristic of birds is their apparent lack of idleness. They are always active and productive. Lack of idleness or active and productive help us to overcome worry. There are four points I would like to explain in this regard. First point, focus and engagement. When we are actively engaged in meaningful activities, we are less likely to dwell on worries. By directing our energy toward productive tasks, we can maintain a sense of purpose and fulfillment, reducing the space for worry to take hold. The second point on look at the birds, Main, mindfulness and presence. Practicing mindfulness and cultivating a habit of being present can help us to break free from the cycle of worry. By focusing on the present moment and appreciating the beauty and opportunities it offers, we can shift our attention away from worries, thought about the past or future. Point three, adaptability and endurance. Like birds, when we cultivate a mindset of adaptability and endurance, we become better equipped to navigate life's uncertainties and setbacks. The last point on look at the birds, connection to nature and the divine. Observing birds in their natural habitat can generate a sense of wonder, awe, and connection to the natural world and the divine. These connections can serve as a powerful reminder of the beauty, order, and providence inherent in God's creations. The second Jesus' command to overcome worry, he said, see how the flowers of the field grow, we found in verse 28 to 30. 
by observing the beauty and simplicity of the flowers, Jesus encourages us to trust in God's provision and care, knowing that He is faithful to meet our needs. By shifting our focus from worry to faith, we can find strength and peace in God's unfailing love. That was command num number two. Now we come to the third, how to overcome worry. Jesus said, do not like pagan, verse 32. Pagans or those who do not have faith in God running after material things, pursuing them with great concern and worry. To avoid behaving like pagans, we must develop a deep trust in God's provision and care, knowing that He is aware of our needs and will provide for us according to His loving care. That is command number three to overcome worry. Now we come to command number four, how to overcome worry. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Verse 33. Jesus instructs us to prioritize seeking his kingdom and his righteousness above all else. Also, he emphasizes the importance of focusing spiritual value rather than preoccupied with worldly concern. Jesus reminds us that when we make him the center of our lives and strive to live in accordance with his will, our material needs will be taken care of. The last, Jesus' command to overcome worry, or the fifth, Jesus said, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. We found this in verse 34. Jesus concluded the, ser the sermon with the command, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Can be summarized into four points. The first point, Trust in God's provisions. Jesus commands us to trust in God's provision for all our needs. The second, prioritize spiritual matters. Seeking God's kingdom and righteousness above worldly concern. The third, live one day at a time. Living in the present moment, and not worrying about tomorrow. The last point on uh, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, avoid idleness, embrace diligence by actively engaging in productive activities can help to overcome worry. Brothers and sisters, now we come to part three, the last point. The title of part three is Repent and Bring It to the Cross. In Romans 14, 23b, Paul said, Everything that does not come from faith is sin. I repeat, everything that does not come from faith is sin. When we worry, we engage in a mindset of doubt and distrust that is contrary to faith in God. By allowing worry to consume our thoughts and emotions, we sin by neglecting to trust in God's 
God's provisions, sovereignty, and promise. I repeat, we sin by neglecting to trust in God's provisions, sovereignty, and promises. Defeating worry involves repentance, bringing our worry to the cross, prayer, faith in God's promises, and walking in the freedom that comes from trusting in Him completely. By allowing these principles, we can experience victory over worry and life in the fullness of God's peace and joy. Brothers and sisters, now we come to conclusions for this sermon. There are three conclusions. The first, faith in Christ as the antidote of worry. Remembering God's characters of provisions and care for his creations offer a remedy to constant worry. The second conclusion, practical habits as the antidote of worry. Prayer, scripture meditation, and diligent work can serve as an antidote to worry. The third conclusion, bring it to the cross by allowing worry to consume our thoughts and emotions, we sin as we neglect to trust in God's provisions, sovereignty, and promises. Bring our worries to the cross, lead us to victory over worry, and opens the door to experiencing the fullness of God's peace and joy. Thank you, brothers and sisters. That is our sermon for today. And now let us close with prayer. Dear God, as we conclude today's reflections on Matthew 6, 25, 34, forgive us when we sin by allowing worry to consume our thoughts and emotions, neglecting to trust in God's provisions sovereignty, and promises. We bring all our worries to your cross and you will grant us victory over worry and opens the door to experiencing the fullness of your peace and joy. Grant us courage and wisdom to avoid idleness and be active and productive in our daily life and in the spiritual growth. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. May the sermon encourage us to trust in God, the Almighty, who is able to save us. Proverbs 3, verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. So, I encourage you today to prayfully consider your offering. God, the source of our blessings, will be honored and pleased. Now, let us pray a family prayer led by Sister Rosa. Dear Father in heaven, we humbly come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and acknowledge that you are our King and our salvation and we exalt you. First of all, we lift up Pak Teguh to you as he prepares for his journey to Manokwari this upcoming week. May your presence be with him, Lord, granting him wisdom and courage as we, he will carry out the good cause of your will. Guide every step and decision that he will make during his ministry there. As we come together as your body, 
we also lift up our country and its leaders to you. During the transition to the new elected president and cabinet lord, we pray that you protect our country. We ask for wisdom and guidance for our leaders and policy makers. May they prioritize the well-being of the people and work towards solutions that promote justice and welfare of the people. Lord, our hearts grieve for those affected by the global crisis, from the humanitarian crisis in the Middle East to the ongoing natural disasters, conflicts, economic uncertainties, and the damaging impact of climate change, and particularly the current heat wave in Asia. Lord, we pray that people would find comfort and hope in you. Strengthen them with your presence and supply their needs in times of emergency. And during these uncertain times, Lord, we seek your presence and your peace. May your light shine upon us, illuminating the path towards a better world. Lord, we offer this prayer with hope and faith, trusting in your wisdom and love. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you join us again next week. And to end the service, let's sing Trust in You, led by Kaani. Happy Sunday. Letting go of every single day. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I've tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. Lord, and I